Whoa! Hello there, this is Taro. Hello. They use the software Automatic Mouth or SAM text to speech system, specifically the old Commodore 64 version. Have you ever thought of using it for vocals and music? No? Well, I'm gonna teach you how to anyway, though PC only and only tested on Windows. And also, having a DAW or digital audio workstation is preferable. There are two resources you can use to generate lines using the old SAM, and have the output be on your computer. First is this executable download from Sebastian Mac's website, it's linked in the description. Just click on this one and you'll get a zip file with all the necessary items, and even some demos to help you understand how it works. The other is for the AWs, a plugin called VST Speak. Blogosaur is the safest bet for download, also linked in the description. If you're wondering which one to choose, I recommend VST Speak because it has the higher quality output. However, it's also pretty buggy so if you don't want to deal with that, you can just use the simulation corner batch instead. In general, both work pretty well, so it's up to you. For our next session, I'll be splitting the video depending on which download you picked. These are the timestamps, so go ahead and skip to the one you picked. This method requires the use of .bat files. I recommend making your own folder located in the same folder as the executable to keep all the files you'll be using. Let's get started. Open up Notepad or any text editor you have, and here are the most basic things you need to do. In the first line, input cd space dot if you're gonna save your files in the same folder as the executable, or cd space dot dot if you're gonna make a folder within that folder instead. And then, make a new line and then put sam space dash wave space test dot wave space and then quotation marks hello world. After that, you have to save it as a dot bat file by first pressing ctrl shift s and then saying the save as type to all files. After that, you just put dot bat at the end of the file name. Then you double click that newly made dot bat file and a new audio file should appear next to the sam executable. Let's do a quick breakdown so you understand how this works. SAM calls the executable, as specified by the CD function from earlier. Dash wave will have the program output a wave file. Test.wave is the name of the file, and hello world will be the message. Between the parameters for the file name and the message, you can have several other parameters that control things like speed, pitch, mouth, and throat, and where or not you'll be using the phonetic system, which I'll get into later. You can put as many SAM calls under the CD function to make as many lines as you want, but not that you have to write them all to different files. Because each line does not add to a file, they override it. So if you have multiple lines written to the same file, the most bottom line which writes to that file will always overwrite everything else. And yes, you could technically make Sam sing using what's already provided here, as the Star Sprangle demo shows. But it's both freeform and kind of limiting in a way. And on top of that, you kind of have to learn the basics of how the pitch works and also the timings. Which is not exactly recommended if you're just getting into it. It could help you if you learn about it though. That's the basics for this method, skip here for the next part. If you're going down this route, then I assume you'll have the VST already installed in your DAW of choice. For my demonstration, I'll be using Apple Studio. If you're looking for a free DAW to use it in, I'll probably just direct you to Cakewalk by BandLab. Once you have VST Speak open there, make sure to extend the window a little bit to the right so you can see and enable the Give All Keystrokes to Plugin setting. This is probably the most important part for any DAW. If your DAW has a setting for this, enable it. Once you have the plugin open, you can just simply input your lines. But do note that there's somewhat of a vague hard cap on how much the plugin will say in one go before it just abruptly stops. So keep that in mind. In the starting screen, you can set the pitch, speed, mouth, and throat as you'd like. There are presets packed with the plugin, but some of them are a bit too extreme to the point of being unintelligible, at least in my opinion. In the config page, you have the option for the fanatics toggle, which I'll get more into later. There's also a filter which makes it sound more muffled, so I don't really recommend it. And then there's sing mode, which is kind of fake on what it actually does, but I usually just leave it on. Now, here's the weird part of how this plugin works. You can't exactly extract files from it manually, so you'll have to render each line individually and manually. Let me explain. In FL Studio, you'll have to make a new pattern, and then make a note on C5 that's long enough for VST Speak to say your whole line. Plus, maybe some extra length for safety. Then you have to export that single pattern into an audio file. Yeah, it's pretty tedious, but it works. Also, what note you use alongside its velocity and panning do matter, so make of that as you will. The process isn't that different in Cakewalk either. Just make sure you added VST Speak as an instrument plugin. From there, just double click on the timeline to open the piano roll. Also, make sure you have an audio source set in the export menu, or else you'll just be exporting silence. Also, if the plugin seemingly stops after an export, it kinda just does that. Just remove the plugin from the project and then re add it. If you found a voice of sound that you really like, you can just make it a preset so you can come back to it easily. And that's it for this one. Coming up next is where the video rejoins. The phonetic system is very important if you want to use sound to its fullest potential. There's a lot of words that Sam can't really pronounce. 
And sometimes you just need to say something else in the dictionary or maybe pronounce a certain word a different way. So there'll be a lot of times where you have to write lines manually using the phonetic system. I'm just gonna guide you to this table by Sebastian Mac on his GitHub repo for Sam. It covers every single sound that Sam can make, and both methods I mentioned earlier use this exact same system. You can basically input whatever from the table and Sam will make a sound. However, if you make even the slightest typo, Sam won't make any sound at all, so... Make sure to keep an eye out and make sure that what you're putting in is valid. Also in VST speak, the forward slash might not be detected correctly, so you have to copy paste into the input. Same goes as dots and commas which work as breaks, whenever you need those. From here you can make Sam say basically anything in any way the table allows. This also allows you to make Sam talk in language other than English, though it won't always work perfectly because of the limited amount of sounds you can make. Now let's get to the meat of the video. So you have the files, now what you need to do is to time it to the music. You could use something as simple as Audacity for this, though DAWs are still preferable. All you really need is a timeline, the ability to split the audio, and stretching or shrinking. On DAWs, the option to turn off snap is also pretty important for better control. I personally use both the DAW and Audacity, though Audacity is mostly just for fixing audio glitches, which I'll get into later. Now, here's one of the many reasons I'm using the old SAM over the newer ones, simpler waveforms. Vowels and sounds like it usually have a repeating pattern which you can just copy and paste to extend it, and that also allows you to fix glitches manually very easily. In FL Studio, you can cut off a vowel and make it a unique sample. Then you can stretch it as you need using the multiplier and time knobs. For the mode, I recommend using E3 or E2 mono or generic. If you stretch a clip too far, it'll usually create artifacts in the start and end, but you can usually just crop it out. In Kickwalk, you can press Alt-A after selecting an audio file and you'll be shown the audio snap menu. Just press the on button here and you'll be given the option to move around parts of the audio file. The smell dot is for moving the marker itself, as in where one part ends and another one starts. If you want to stretch or string parts, you have to move around the top or bottom of the marker. You can also select multiple markers by dragging out your selection. As for the stretch method, I don't know. It's probably just me not having used Cakewalk enough, but it doesn't really seem to make much of a difference, at least in this case. If you stretch it, it'll usually create a lot of artifacts, though it's less noticeable if you just shrink parts. As you've noticed, it's better for a part to be too long than it is too short. Usually, glitches and other weird artifacts usually appear when you're trying to extend something. So just make your lines a little bit longer than what they need to be. That way, you only have to cut off little bits and also shrink the audio instead of extending it. Which leaves you off with very few bugs, at least my experience. However, going and really manipulating your audio with things like splitting and stitching your parts together will most of the time create glitches, like this weird spike. Here's how to fix that in Audacity. First, I recommend changing the view to selection to sample start and sample length. This is mostly for accuracy. Then, find a repeating pattern near the glitch. And then select about a loop or two of the repeating pattern. Copy that loop, and then take note of the length of the sample at the bottom. Then select a point that looks like the start of your loop, and also nearest the glitch. After that, put in the length of the sample you copied earlier into this one. And then, press paste. If there's still some parts of the glitch left, you can move the start of your selection and then move it over the end of your selection, making it the end of the selection, and the end the start. From there, you can re-input the length of the sample, and then paste again. Now you patch the glitch while changing the timing. Alternatively, you could also just delete the glitch part, which does slightly change the timing just by a couple milliseconds, but you know, if you're willing to fix that, then go ahead. Now for the fun part, pitch. Really, any pitch manipulation plugin or software like Reaper 3 tune with the manual correction menu or Logic's pitch flex could probably work for this. Audacity's built-in change pitch function is a little more questionable, so I recommend using something else. I personally just use FL Studio's new tone. For free options, Kickwell comes with Melodyne, which is the gold standard for pitch manipulation, but unfortunately it is the 3rd day trial version. So Kato V is what I'll be directing you to instead, as it has a snap to MIDI function. I'll do a quick tutorial for it on Kickwalk here, just because it, it's a little bit confusing if you don't know how to do it, so skip here if you already have a decent option. So I'm going to assume that you have Kickwalk and Kato V installed, both are linked in the description, and I'll start from there. Once you have Kettle installed, go to Utilities and then Kickwalk Plugin Manager. From there, find Kettle V, usually in the category VST Audio Effects. Then, select it and click on Plugin Properties, and enable Configure as Synth. This will allow you to input MIDI to Kettle V, which will be used for the Snap to MIDI function I mentioned earlier. You can then make an audio track, go to the small little Effects tab and click on the plus button, and then go to Insert Soft Synth, not Effects because we just changed it, and then Uncategorized, and you'll find Kettle V there. After that, you can create a MIDI track and it should have the output on the right here set to Kettle V. You then want to open back up Kettle V and disable Tune to Scale, leaving only MIDI on. 
From there you can import the audio on the audio track and double click on the MIDI track to open the piano roll and create the melody that the vocals will be following. Make sure they sync correctly on the timeline. For Cato V, I generally recommend setting the nuance knob all the way to zero. This will usually keep Sam's voice intact without a lot of artifacts. Every other setting is just completely up to you to play with. After that, you can just export it as a separate audio file. Or if you already have a project going in Cakewalk, you can just keep it there, whatever. Pitching is really the home stretch, as it's the simplest and most straightforward step out of the entire process. But that doesn't mean that you can just throw caution to the wind. In general, I recommend keeping the vocals relatively close to the A3 to A4 range, since that's close to how Sam usually sounds, at least in default settings. However, there's still some things to keep in mind. Most pitch manipulation software is usually built for more complex sounds, like voice. So, it can sometimes overcomplicate simpler sounds like Sam's speech, and as a result, you can get a lot of artifacts. Sometimes you can fix it by redoing the line in a slightly different way. But most of the time, especially with more minor cases, I'd just say, roll with it. Most of the time, you can usually mask minor artifacts using effects or the mix itself. As an extra, here's a tip on mixing Sam. Sam, to put it lightly, completely overpowers any mix it's put into. So, some kind of limiter and some EQing is recommended to keep it in check. You can kinda treat it like pre-compressed vocals, essentially. And with all that, you're equipped with the basics to make Sam sing. Just put on a beat, douse them with whatever effect you want, and let them rip. With just a little bit of time getting used to Sam, you can make it sound something like this. Alright, that's it for the video. I know the whole process is a little bit convoluted, but this is the simplest way I know. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask in the comments. If you have any suggestions for better options, then also go ahead to the comments. Yes, there's tip speech, but it's paid. And yes, AI exists, but fuck that. I guess if you work in software, this is your invitation to make something simpler. For all four of us who use this thing for focals. But anyways, like, sub, whatever. I have a buy me a coffee, you can support me directly. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, whenever that is.